In today's video, I'm going to be comparing instant dashi or han dashi to freshly made dashi. I'm going to whip up a batch of each and I'm going to be trying them side by side on their own, comparing their flavor, convenience, and their price. After that, I'm going to use it in a dish. This time we're going to be making a miso soup with some tofu and some mushrooms. I'm going to try them side by side again to see if it's really worth the effort in a finished dish. All right, so the fresh dashi is going to take the longest, so we're going to get cracking with that. I'm pulling the recipe from Japanese Cooking, A Simple Art by Shizuo Suji. Uh, everywhere that I looked online when I was getting into Japanese cooking myself, this was regarded to the Bible of classic Japanese cooking, so we're going to use this as our starting point. Well, this comes to a boil, I'm going to read you the first paragraph that Shizuo Suji writes about dashi in the book Japanese Cooking, where I've got this recipe from. Shizuo says, Dashi, Japan's all-purpose soup stock and seasoning, stands figuratively, if not literally, at the right hand of every Japanese chef. Different varieties of dashi lend subtle depth to a wide variety of soups and entrees. Dashi provides Japanese cuisine with its characteristic flavor and can be said without exaggeration that the success or failure or mediocrity of a dish is ultimately determined by the flavor and quality of the dashi that seasons it. Making a good dashi is the first secret of the simple art of Japanese cooking. So I would also like to point out the dashi is the first recipe in this book. It goes over the ingredients that you're going to be seeing in the book and explains all of them to you in case it's something that you've not seen before and gives you some substitutions, which is really fantastic. Uh, the next topic, they talk about knives. So you guys know that we like Japanese knives. They talk about that and all the cuts that are going to be expected of you in this book. And then dashi is number one. So while dashi does seem to be an incredibly important part of Japanese cuisine, it is also said in the next paragraph that many home cooks in Japan turn to instant dashi just for convenience. So it can't be the worst thing ever, and we're going to find out. So for this recipe, we're going to be making one liter of stock. So we're going to start with one liter of cold water. So for the one liter of water, we are looking for 30 grams of kombu. All right, so here's our kombu, guys. As you can see, it's got kind of this white dust on it. This is a lot of natural MSG and where most of the flavor comes from from the kombu. If you want to wipe this off with a lightly damp rag, just a couple quick wipes, you can, but I really encourage you to leave it on because that's where most of the flavor is going to be in the kombu. So here I've got a piece. This is 28 grams. I would say that this is close enough, so we're going to rip this up, get it into the water, and then we're going to bring that cold water slowly to a boil, which should take about 10 to 15 minutes. All right, guys, well, this is slowly coming to a boil. We're going to measure out our katsuobushi or our bonito flakes. We're looking for 30 grams of this as well, so we're having equal parts of combo to bonito flakes. Now, bonito flakes can be kind of hard to measure without a scale because they weigh almost nothing. This whole bag is 80 grams, so a little bit less than half this bag would be fine. If you don't have a scale, that's okay. You can just go by your own intuition, but a scale is really, really going to help if you're trying to match a recipe for something like this. All right, guys, so I was just turning my heat down. Like I said, it's really important to bring this to a boil slowly, and just before it boils, we're going to take out the kombu. Kombu tends to get really bitter and has an unpleasant aroma if you do boil it, so we're going to want to take it out right before, but we also want to take it there slowly so it has long enough to extract. And you'll notice that the kombu becomes very quickly a lot more pliable. It's said that when it's done, you should be able to pierce your fingernail into it with relative ease. Just grabbing a shot so you guys can see. Again, we're starting to simmer, but we're not quite at a boil yet. There's a little bit of foam. We're going to skim that off later, so don't worry about it just yet. The water is starting to change color just a little bit, but if it's getting scummy, you've probably gone too far too fast. All right, guys, our water is just starting to boil, so really, really quickly, we're going to remove our kombu here. Now, be sure not to throw this away because we can use this again and continue to make dashi from this a couple times. Same is going to go for the bonito flakes later, so hold on to those. All right, now that we've simmered our kombu for about 10 minutes, we're going to crank this guy back up, and we're going to bring this to a boil. As soon as it hits a boil, we're going to throw in a quarter cup of cold water to bring the temperature down just a little bit. We're going to dump in all of our bonito flakes. We're going to bring it back to a boil one more time, and as soon as it boils, we're going to turn it off immediately. We don't want it to boil for any more than a few seconds, because then it's going to get bitter, and again, the odor is not going to be super nice. Your dashi should have already been pretty hot at this point, so this should only take a few seconds. Mine's already boiling. So now, I'm going to hit it with just a little bit of water, and immediately you're going to see it stops boiling, and we're going to go in with all of our bonito flakes here. All right, mine's up to a boil very quickly again. It's been a few seconds. I'm going to shut it off right away. And now we're going to wait about 30 seconds to a minute. We're going to wait for all the bonito to sink to the bottom, and then we're going to strain this. All right, so it's been a little over a minute. The bonito flakes are starting to sink to the bottom of the pot. We don't want this to get too strong, and we want to be able to reserve both the bonito flakes and the kombu from earlier for the second batch of dashi that we're going to make from this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to strain this. Now you should be doing this through cheesecloth. I thought I had some. I didn't. I don't really have the time to run out and get it now, so it's not going to be perfectly clear, but that's okay too. And then there we go. The dashi's done. I gotta say, I followed other recipes for dashi before that I've seen online. It's only three ingredients, one of which is water, so it's not that difficult. But in none of the other recipes that I've seen have they used near as much kombu or bonito in it. So I'm not sure if this is going to be incredibly strong or if I've just been making it wrong this whole time. If there's any Japanese viewers, let me know in the comments down below. Ooh. 
That smells wonderful. That smells really, really smoky. Again, it does smell stronger than any of the dashi that I've made before. Perhaps I've just been missing out. All right, guys, now we're gonna make our instant dashi. So I'm gonna make one liter of this so I can make it comparable to the other batch that we had. All right, so we've got our water coming up to a boil. Uh, unfortunately, the handashi that I'm using doesn't tell you how much to use. So I'm just gonna kind of wing it. I'm gonna try to make it comparable to that broth and its strength of flavor, and then we're gonna go from there. I'm gonna start with five grams and see what that looks like. Okay, so at 12 grams of dashi, this seems to be a pretty reasonable amount for the one liter of stock that we're making here. So I'm gonna call it there, I'm gonna turn this off, I'm gonna cool them both down a little bit, and we're gonna come back and try them. Okay, we're back. We got both our dashis here. On my left side, we got the fresh dashi that I made, and on the right side, we've got the handashi. Now, I'll show you guys some b-roll, and you can see that the color is gonna be drastically different here. On my left, the fresh dash that we made has a really, really nice, deep, almost amber color. Looks really, really rich, looks very clear, even though we didn't pass it through cheesecloth. On my right, on the Han dashi, it's kind of like a pale yellow, kind of brown color. You can see there's a fair bit of sediment in the bottom. And now we're gonna taste them. I'm gonna give it a stir, just to get some of that sediment up, because I assume that is some of the flavor in there. This one smells like bonito flakes. It smells a little bit fishy, it smells a little bit smoky. It is delicious, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna talk bad about it because it's an instant product. That is really, really tasty. I think that might change when I try the fresh dashi, which is why I tried that first, but we'll get to that next. I'll say that on the nose, this one actually does smell a little bit more fishy and a little bit less smoky than the Han dashi does, but it doesn't smell as strong overall. I know in the book they talk about um, having fresh shaved bonito being un not comparable to either the pre-shaved or to the instant dashi. Uh, unfortunately, in the time that I had to film this video, I didn't have time to order a block of katsu abushi and one of the graters because uh, they don't sell them anywhere locally that I have, but maybe we'll make another video including that next time. One sec. That's really interesting. Um, though the, the aroma from this guy is not as strong as this one. I would argue that the smokiness comes through in a nicer way. It's less punch you in the face and a little bit more in the background. It's certainly more tasteful. Okay, so after tasting both, I'm gonna say that the Handashi is not bad. Realistically, it's better than a lot of the chicken and beef stocks that I get in North American grocery stores, comparatively, versus the real thing. However, when you try it side by side, um, the Handashi is a lot saltier. So if you want more flavor, if you want a comparable amount of flavor, um, it's gonna be a lot saltier and you're not gonna be able to do anything about that. Whereas with the fresh dashi, it's not quite as salty and I feel like I might need to add salt to the dish later or control that at my own rate. That's gonna be really, really nice, especially making this into a miso soup because miso itself is already very, very salty or if we're doing gyudon and we need to put soy sauce or something like that, then this is gonna lend itself a lot better to a dish like that. All right, we're back and we're gonna cut up some ingredients for the miso soup. I've got some soft tofu, I've got some wakame that I've got rehydrating in some warm water here, and I've got some scallions and of course some miso paste. Hey guys, we're back with our two soups here. I know this should probably be a blind test to be more effective because I know what's in these bowls, but unfortunately no one's here with me today. So I'm gonna try both these. On my left, we've got the handashi miso soup, and on the right, we've got the fresh dashi miso soup. I'm gonna start with the handashi. I'd like to point out also that I used an equal amount of miso on both of these and the same amount of broth to keep the salt levels the same. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty good. I will say it's definitely a little bit on the salty side, but I kind of expected that tasting before. I know miso is very, very salty as well. It's not bad, it's just underwhelming. That's a lot better. The fish flavor is stronger in both on its own and mixed into the miso soup on the fresh dashi but it's not a fishy flavor that people associate with bad fish. It is more adjacent to a freshly cooked piece of fish flavor and it is stronger. Whereas with the instant dashi, it's closer to that weird kind of funky fish, but it's not quite as strong. Now, I didn't expect this. Um, I expected it to be a bigger difference when I was trying them side by side on their own. I didn't expect it to be a bigger difference in the food, but I think it's a miso being such a salty ingredient, salt amplifies flavors and I think the amplified flavor of the better fresh dashi is making a way bigger impact than I thought. Here I was thinking I didn't like miso soup. This is really good. This is okay. All right guys, there we have it. So aroma, flavor, definitely go to the fresh dashi. Obviously the convenience is going to go to the instant dashi. I'm gonna do the breakdown on price. I'm gonna put it up on either side of me so you guys can see the price difference. Normally convenience foods are more expensive. Normally when you buy 
stock, be it chicken or beef stock, is gonna be expensive for good stuff. This is looking like it's gonna be the cheaper option. Is it worth the effort? Yes. In a dish like miso soup, 100%, I'm probably never gonna make it like this again if I have the stuff on hand, or I've never really been in a pinch where I needed to make miso soup, so I'll probably just make something else if I don't have the proper ingredients to make it again. Now, like we were going to do gyudon for this dish for the video, I think maybe if I was doing something like that again, I see no problem using something like this, more of a background ingredient. But for dishes where it's more upfront, being soups and stews and things like that, 100% of the time, I'm going to avoid the handashi moving forward because it's really not that much work to make this. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really enjoyed making this video and I hope you enjoyed it too. So if you wanna see more of this, let us know down in the comment section below. If you wanna see anything specific, let us know as well. If you wanna see more comparisons between instant or homemade food, or if there's any recipes that you wanna see from any of us. So thanks again, guys. Smash that like button, subscribe for more. And until next time, stay sharp. Get your hands off of me.